What's up, Summoners? King Blair here. Today, we're going to be talking about the current banner hero, Tai Yu, and whether or not you should pull for him. So if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and see your server. Link down in the description. Without further ado, let's get right into it. As always, we'll first talk about what the upcoming heroes are. We'll do a summary on the hero, and then we will go and actually see his skills, how he functions, what the, what I think about him, and just see the skills in depth, as well as this and the artifact, because the artifact is actually going to be quite impactful. So let's just jump right in. So first, where are we right now? What's coming next? If you haven't seen the announcement, they are going to be rerunning a lot of the collabs. They already announced that they're going to be happening. They just haven't announced the actual dates. But that does mean that Emilia, Rem, Remuro, and Milam are very likely to come back. We also just came back from the Selective Summit where you get to pick the three heroes as you can see from my bookmarks and my sky stones i am completely drained as i imagine a lot of you are as well so tai Yu comes at a time where bookmarks are very limited and there's a lot of things coming right around the corner that you should be saving for so even though Taiyu is a really cool looking unit should you pull for him at the end of the day to summarize the whole video in a second not really just because of the collab reruns so unless you have the resources then by all means he's not a bad hero by any means right he's not a bad hero it just happens that there's just so many things around him and he's not a hundred percent needed although he can help against current meta defenses in arena and guild wars and maybe has some potential in rta to counter some non-attack heroes and we'll cover that more in detail so as far as what he does essentially his main role he's gonna be very similar to kind of like a Celine, and very similar to like uh, yeah, mostly like Celine is the one that I really think about when I see him, where he can actually threaten certain type of team compositions, but may not always 100% be able to reliably counter those heroes. So, so let's just jump right into a kit so you guys see what I mean. But again, just kind of summarize, just because there's so much things to say for, not that he's bad, nothing against him. It's just, it's hard to justify pulling for him when you know that Emilia is coming back, when you just came from that triple summoning banner, where all these key heroes like Crawl that have been good for ages, you have an opportunity to get, or even Tamba that are gonna help propel your account forward. So Taiyu, even though he has a really cool kit, maybe, may, most likely, unless you have extra resources, unless you're rolling on resources, maybe you're an uh, older player that has all the heroes, there's nothing you're shooting for on the on the banner, you just wanna get new heroes, then by all means, he, he could be potentially pretty cool, right? He's, Really, really cool. So let's actually look at the kit so you can see why I don't say he's not the most have unit in the game, but can actually help you in some scenarios. But as far as stat line, the attack is okay. It's nothing crazy. The HP and defense are pretty standard for a warrior. The crit rate, pretty high up there. And then as far as the effectiveness, he does have some effectiveness, which he will actually uh, be needing. Nothing crazy on the speed, right? 115, like it's not bad, but it's not like C. Lilius, right? Which which is good, right? We shouldn't keep getting C. Lilius speed unit, but just remember that he's not like this super fast unit. Uh, he will be needing speed, but 115, usually when you have 115 units, those type of units can reach 270, 280 speed for DPS while balancing all those stats out. So most likely he's going to be around that's 270, 290 speed for an end game player, uh, most likely being like 250, 260 for earlier game players, right? But now as far as the actual kit and what he actually does. So first you have the S2, which I'm going to be honest with y'all, the first time I saw this, I was like, this thing looks like a whole essay, uh, but it's actually very simple at what it does. It attacks one enemy and increases his combat readiness by 15%. 115 speed with the increased combat readiness, pretty decent, right? The other thing, and that's it, that's the S1. And you get, it scales off of speed. So again, you're gonna be building him with speed, which again, 270, 280 is most likely where he's going to be, 260. Uh, very similar to like things like Tomoka. Tomaru Luka shares the same speed with him. And Tomaru Luka did end up around 240 plus 270, like in that range, right, of a speed DPS. The thing that starts to become a little more special is kind of like he becomes a Jackal, where he gets an extra S1 attack after it if he's enraged. And we'll talk about how he gets enraged. But when you get that, he activates an extra attack and it's only activated once per turn during your turn. And you, essentially, it's just going to be damage that, again, scales off of your speed. Okay, so straight damage, but can actually get quite high damage on this one, right? The damage ratio is actually look pretty solid, right? But again, if he doesn't have rage, he's not doing too much, right? It's just a very simple S1. He needs to get that in rage to really be able to get that damage, right? So again, how does he get in rage? The way he gets enraged is actually going to be when an enemy uses a non-attack skill, and he will also get a skill nullifier. This is going to be his only form of protection, which is not the strongest, but it's not the worst in the world either. So now, you may be thinking, non-attack skills, there's a lot, right? There are a lot, which is why I mentioned he's very similar to Selene, that he's supposed to be able to counter these type of heroes. Um, 
But yeah, it's it's very interesting S2. Uh, so as far as what he actually gets with the skill Null of Fire, that will actually allow him to be able to survive after the non-attack boosting skill. And the other thing is that he is also going to be uh, cleansing, right? So that part is pretty important because of the units that usually you're going to use it against. So let's just go over it and why I say he's good for defense. So Conquer, Lilius, and Peyra. Both very meta. They're everywhere in Guild Wars. They're everywhere in Arena, right? They're for, They're gonna use their S3s. They're not attack seals. It's not RTA, right? So they're forced to use that. So let's say Para against Para. Para uses their S3. You're going to be getting enraged. You're gonna be cleansing the Para, and you're gonna get skill null fire to potentially survive the follow up, right? That's pretty good. And uh, Celilia, same thing. He's not dark, so Celilia will do her S3. She'll attack break him. And then he'll get a skill nullifier and get the, the buff, right? And with his artifact, he'll get a nice little small CR push. And he'll be able to cut the Conquer Lilius, right? So one of those things that's like, okay, I could see it. Amelia, right? Amelia is another very highly used unit right now in Epic 7 because her S2 and the RTA Soul Weaver change is huge. Against Amelia, if they S2, let's say, a, a hero that can do single target damage, let's say Rimuru. If they S2 the Rimuru and push up the Rimuru, he will trigger this, you will get a skill nullifier, and you'll actually be able to nullify the Rimuru's S3 and not and not die that turn, right? So that part, it can be kind of nice. It, it's, it's pretty decent. It gives him just enough survivability. Now, on the other hand, the part that makes this hard is that this is his own survivability. And essentially, if, they're don't, if they don't use a non-attack skill, you are very easy to kill. You have almost no protection, right? And then as far as the S3, pretty good buff and pretty, pretty decent skill, right? People tend to underestimate strips. But strips can be very crushing. It's a dispel two buffs and you increase the seal cooldown of the highest attack uh, target twice. So similar to Kise, except it's an AoE strip and it's only the highest attack. So why did they make this, right? And this part is very interesting to me that they did it this way. Because when you look at him, he's fire, right? He, he has fire, he uses his summer sword. He looks like he'd be this fire hero. But they made him water. Why? And they made this S3 target highest attack. Why? Because of Hua. And why did they make this skill also? Because of Para. It just feels like a very targeted kit uh, against that Para Hua, essentially, which is one of the most popular Guild Wars defenses right now that we made a video about that you may not need him necessarily. But again, he could function. But okay, what, what does he do aside from that? Well, when he has uh, Enraged, it strips all buffs instead of just one, but it does not get an Ignore F rest, which makes him a lot more balanced, right? So overall, you start seeing his goal and what he's trying to do. And Smogit was very clear on what they wanted. They made this to be a counter to Peyrafwa. It is so clear to me. It is ridiculously clear to me that it's 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 what they wanted, right? When they made this hero, they had that in mind. Peyrafwa, maybe a million RTA, right? But the main one is going to be Peyrafwa. Why? Because this cleanse, to cleanse Peyra, the strip, to strip Paris buffs, right? So she doesn't get escort. And then the highest attack reset, so Hua doesn't get to S3U. So that's his main role. So how does he perform at that role? Well, 85% of the games, if you're someone that struggles against that Hua Para defense, he'll pretty much almost win you 85% of those defenses. Why do I say 85%? Again, because this is not Ignore Ephraim. And because it doesn't Ignore Ephraim when he has enraged, it does not give you a 100% chance to actually beat those defenses, which is actually more impactful than you think, because if you start thinking 85%, that's a lot, right? But again, at the end of the day, if you're someone that can't even touch Guild Wars right now because you just don't have the tools, he could be that tool for you, right? If, if it's something that you absolutely cannot right now even try to fight these Guild Wars defenses, it's reliable enough. If you're a top 20 guild it's, or like a top 50 or even top 100, it probably, people will not be happy if you're using it, but if you're lower than that and you're just trying to get into Guild Wars and you're really struggling against those pay, uh, Para Hua defenses, he's definitely a really good addition for that. But that's where the problem is. It's, it's, it's hard to see how much more he can actually be. The reason why I say that is because if he doesn't, if no one uses a non-attack skill for RTA, right? This is for RTA. If no one uses a non-attack skill, he has zero protection, right? He doesn't have enraged, so his S1's not doing crazy damage. He essentially becomes a strip with an S1, right? Nothing really scary, which again, it's a similar problem that Celine has, where if there is no non-attack skill, it is really easy to get rid of her, right? So it's one of those things that's like, it, he definitely has his weaknesses, uh, but it's, it's pretty clear what they wanted him to do, right? But in the future, again, as more and more non-attack heroes are introduced to the game, there's a chance to actually either become better or the meta shifts the other way, he'll actually become worse. So right now, 
what do I think about him? I think he was very clearly made to counter a very specific uh, situation in Guild Wars defense, whether it's the Conquer Lilius type teams with Hua or it's the Para type teams with Hua. Them not making this ignore Ephraim makes him more balanced, but it also makes him less reliable in those situations. For RTA, a full strip is very nice. You can't actually stop an opponent from deciding to do this. Could be decent into Amelia, which is very popular right now. Could be decent into these scenarios. But again, it's one of those things that's like, a lot of people will kind of just ignore him. Um, because even if they still get their S3, right? Because he doesn't have any self CR push. So Amelia still gets to push something up. That Hua can still kill something else. They don't have to go for him necessarily, right? So one of those things that's like, it really does depend, but again, within Rage, this S1 does do a really good damage. I, I don't want to say that this skill doesn't do that much damage. This skill slaps, right? This skill will just smack the opponent, right? If he has uh, if he has Rage. It is quite a lot of damage. So it could be something that definitely has potential. I, I see him as a unit that has a lot of potential. That right now, it's a unit that we won't see as much play right now. But as new units are introduced, will either become better or maybe come worse depending on which way the meta shifts, right? So it's one of those units that's like kind of a meta call, what you want. As of right now, the main reason you would be pulling for him is if you really struggle against those defenses and don't have other options. Besides that, if you're not interested or if you have answers for those teams, for RTA and for all this stuff, Amelia is way more important, Reamer is way more important, right? If you don't have resources right now, it's not worth it, right? Amelia and Reamer are way more important. Sunrise Serial is coming out. Uh, Seaside Bologna, right? These heroes are limited. They're coming out a lot more important than him, which is why it's not that he's necessarily bad, that I don't think you should pull for him. It's more of the fact that there is so much other stuff to be saving for that makes it hard for him. But that's going to take us to his artifact because the artifact is also going to be actually kind of insane. And this is something that I actually recommend all of you guys to consider getting at least one copy of because it's going to be an amazing, amazing warrior artifact. And warriors don't have many. Essentially, this makes him a lot better. It fixes one of his weaknesses. That is that he doesn't have a self-CR push. This does give him a self-CR push uh, because it actually does allow him to potentially cut an Amelia. Although it's unlikely because it's only 10%. Where this artifact really shines is in Guild Wars defense, Arena defense, and Emo Kawasu. Why do I say that? For Emo Kawasu in particular, it's like, man, this is his artifact. It gives him straight up attack. Emo Kawasu does all his damage based on the attack, right? Because it's all through burns. On top of that, it gives him a 10% CR push when the enemy uses a non-attack. Uh, after an enemy uses a non-attack skill, you get that Kama Reines by 10%. One of the biggest issues Emma Kawasu had when he wasn't able to counter a lot of these Rain, Samurai Seria team compositions was because he didn't have enough push. This gives him that push. So essentially, you're, you're getting that extra 10% push. The other thing that starts getting a little bit scarier is for Guild Wars defense against those Conquer Lilia's Hua defenses. Simple Angelica was very common, right? A lot of people used to run Simple Angelica to beat a lot of the Conquer Lilia's defenses. That con or, or even things like Amelia, right? This is a lot scarier because if that Hua is 280 speed Hua and she gets a 10% CR push, that potentially is the difference of you not cutting with Amelia Strasse or some Amelia Operator Sigurd, right? So it's gonna require better gear to fight and it makes Simple Angelica much scarier against Hua defenses because you can't properly speed tune, right? Because they're gonna do this with Hua, Hua still gets that 20% attack and they get the 10% increase, right? It's very scary, right? It's a really good artifact and, artif and warriors do not have the best artifact selection out there. So it's a really good artifact for warriors. But that is going to be all I actually got for you guys today. It's gonna have to summarize everything. And again, I wanna say, I don't think he's a bad hero. I, I'm gonna try pulling for him with my 700 Sky Stones because I already do have all the call up heroes and all the summer heroes. I can actually afford to try to start pulling for him. Although I know I should try to be ready to pity a unit because uh, there's a chance that if I don't get it, I just wasted a ton of summons. So I'm gonna try to go all the way down to pity for him. I'm gonna have to do something. I'll probably just clear adventure mode to get those crystals. But if you're someone that has not gotten Rimuru, has not gotten Amelia, has not gotten Summer Asteria, all these limited heroes, are on their way. The triple banner is still there. This is the reason I'm so dry right now and I'm probably not gonna be able to pull for him is because the triple banner is more important than he is as well because units like Craw, Tama are going to actually progress your account forward. So it's one of those things that he just came out at a bad time, right? If he's a hero that came out when it, things were slow, I might've actually recommended him because he actually, it's, it's a pretty decent meta unit, although there's a chance he'll get worse over time or potentially even better over time, right? It just depends how the meta shifts, but because of just right now, resources are limited. 
He's a very specific unit niche. It's 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 hard for me to justify saying pull for him when all these other things are there. But again, at the end of the day, it is your decision. If you liked what you saw, if you really struggle with Pirahua defenses, I would not pull him just for RTA purposes. If you're pulling for him, it's mostly for Gilders and Arena. And you are ready to accept that 15% loss ratio against those defenses. But that is all I got for you guys today. And I will see you next time. Peace.